So as we talked about some of the qualifications, you need to have your family doctor take care of you from a diabetes standpoint. If you have poor circulation, if you have neuropathy with a callus, if you have a history of an ulcer or you have a current ulcer, or if you've lost some or part of your foot, those are things that will qualify you to get the diabetic shoes and the insoles. Just by having diabetes does not qualify you for having the shoes. I think that that's not a good thing to do because a Medicare program is designed to protect feet that are at risk. To me, all diabetic feet are at risk. Even if you have circulation, even if you have good sensation, your foot is still at risk somewhere down the line. Um, so I, I think they should cover it, but obviously they don't. Um, an insert can be an off-the-shelf one or it can be custom-made. A lot of that depends on what your foot structure looks like. Most patients, their foot structure is relatively normal, so an off-the-shelf product is, works just fine. Um, if you have someone that has, for example, Charcot, that has a deformity of the foot, they can't fit into an over-the-counter one. They have to have a custom-made one. Um, <clears throat> these are some examples. These are only four examples of diabetic shoes. They come in different styles. You have your gym shoe, you have your dress shoe. You have more of a, a casual type of shoe here. They come with Velcro, they come with laces. So you can have pretty much any style under the sun. Um, Patrick has a pretty good display up at the top of the stairs. I think he's got three racks full of shoes. Those are the ones that are offered through the program. So there's a lot to pick from. Uh, these are off-the-shelf ones. Off-the-shelf ones are made of two materials. They're made a softer cover on the top, then a harder material on the bottom, and then same thing here. These are generally heat molded with a, a heat gun where you warm it up and you just put your foot impression on there, or sometimes they just slide them in the shoe and your natural uh, body weight will go ahead and mold the insert to your foot. This is a custom-made one. It's made out of numerous material. The one on the bottom is the stiffest, and as you move up, they have less stiffness to it, but they're all, it's a very protective material. Plantar fasciitis or heel pain, very common. You can get this at any age, any activity, any occupation. It doesn't matter. Um, most of the time, this is not caused by trauma. It starts little by little, and then as the months go by, it gets worse and worse. It affects the way that, that you're walking. Sometimes people have to stop what they're doing exercise-wise. They're not able to keep up with their kids or grandkids because their foot is bothering them. Um, it usually after rest or in the morning has pain. If you start moving around, it feels better, but as soon as you sit down for lunch, for dinner, you get up, it, pain uh, continues on again. Good part about it is there's a number of different treatment options. Go from anti-inflammatories, physical therapy, um, orthotics I put down over-the-counter and custom-made. Some insurances do not cover custom-made orthotics. There's enough over-the-counter products. Some of them are better than others. Um, I even have a, a more of a solid type of over-the-counter insert that I give to some patients. But the same thing, it all depends on your foot structure, your foot type, and things like that. Changing in shoes, some patients, for example, they're working in the trades, they get a new pair of shoes every six months, like clockwork, and then now it's like, okay, I've had these for a year, I've had these same insoles for a year. Sometimes by changing shoes, we'll do it. Cortisone injections are really good. Gets the medicine right down to where the pain is. You can only have three injections in a 12-month period, but it does help a lot. I use a long-acting steroid, so sometimes it takes a day to kick in. Once it kicks in, you can get anywhere from weeks to months of relief out of that. Um, it's not a long-term solution because the main problem is the mechanics of your foot. So uh, almost all my patients are in orthotics, and that's really the key to treatment of plantar fasciitis. Uh, you can use a night splint. Not many people are able to tolerate wearing the night splint at night. So you know, most people will say, no, I don't want it. But whoever has it usually do, does pretty well with it. Uh, shockwave therapy. Uh, to me, I kind of more use it as a stopgap between failed conservative care and surgery. Um, kind of, it's like it works okay for me, but I think your better long-term solution is with surgery. Um, and we'll get into some details about it. Uh, surgery does usually work pretty well, and it does solve your problem. So here's a typical patient. Here's a patient's heel over here. The leg is up here, and the toes are on the side here. This is a typical heel, heel spur that, that you have here. The plantar fasciitis is in this general area here, and the ligament runs from the heel to the ball of your foot. So when you actually do the surgery, all you do is you actually just cut the ligament right here in the front part of your foot, or front part of your heel, I'm sorry, and have you wa use a walking boot for about six weeks. The purpose of the walking boot is to keep this part 
and then this part over here stretched out and it will scar in so essentially you're creating a longer ligament than what you had when you create a longer ligament you get rid of the pull and you get rid of the pain tendonitis tendonitis can happen anywhere in the foot i'm just going to concentrate on on two of the more common tendons your achilles tendon and your other tendon on the inside part of your ankle which is called the posterior tibial tendon um, and we'll get into each one of those in a minute uh, usually is used caused by overuse or abnormal use of that tendon if the tendon if you notice the tendonitis but you keep blowing it off keep doing what you're doing it can become chronic chronic when you have a chronic tendonitis it can weaken the tendon to the point to where it can snap now the tendon can snap when you feel it or you can snap where all of a sudden you notice that your arch has fallen but you don't remember any kind of an, an incident send you for an MRI, it shows a completely torn tendon. So it doesn't always have to be through trauma. Immobilization works very well. Physical therapy works really well. Bracing works well. And then last but not least is always surgery. You do get to a point to where no matter what you do, you can't do anything else other than have surgery. There are some patients where surgery is not an option for them, whether from a health standpoint, a circulation standpoint, um, a lifestyle standpoint, they just can't do it. So we usually take care of them with braces that way. Achilles tendonitis, uh, common in weekend warriors, um, women who have had who wore heels for many years and then all of a sudden decide to either change jobs or are starting to work out, out again. They need flatter type of shoes. So the fact that your Achilles tendon has been used to operating with a heel and now all of a sudden it needs to operate in, a, in a, essentially a longer position, very common to have with women. I've noticed that the shorter the woman is, the more tendonitis they get in their Achilles because of the shortened heel cord that they have. Um, in terms of the Achilles tendon, if you rupture it, it usually requires surgery. Same thing, patient population, you have to pick and find and see, is the surgery gonna help them or not? If you are a well-conditioned athlete, if you're someone who's 25 or 30, I would say yes, go ahead and fix it. If you're someone who has a sedentary lifestyle, problem breathing, heart issues, I would probably say no, it's not good. So here is uh, MRI just to demonstrate. Your, your leg is here, your heel bone is here. You have your Achilles tendon, it's nice and straight and black. It's uniform in, in thickness from front to back. Same color black all the way through. This is a gentleman here who has a significantly thickened Achilles tendon. It's about two to three times its width. All of a sudden he's got some gray areas here and some gray areas up farther up. Um, he has a chronic tear. So for this kind of a patient, he was young, took him to surgery cleaned all this up, fixed up all the, the tears that he has, uh, kept them immobilized for a while, and he ended up doing fine. Posterior tibial tendonitis. This is the major tendon that supports your arch. And over time, this can get stretched out due to mechanics of your foot, mechanics of your leg. A lot of times this can be controlled with an orthotic or giving you some kind of an arch support, or it can also be supported with a brace. If this tendon ruptures, Usually it is not related to trauma. Usually it's through wear and tear. This is a tendon that you can think of as a rubber band. The more you pull and stretch the rubber band, the weaker it gets, and then at one point it's just gonna snap. Uh, surgery for this can be numerous. It could be anywhere from just repairing the tendon and augmenting it with another tendon to fusing a bunch of joints in the back part of your foot and your ankle or going ahead and uh, doing a combination of making a cut in the heel bone, sliding it over to better align things, and then sewing the tendon to an adjacent tendon to it. it does, the surgery itself takes a long time, three to four months recovery time is normal, and then after that you spend about two months in therapy. So it is a long recovery process for it. Arthritis, arthritis can happen at any age. Obviously it's more common to have as you're older as opposed to if you're younger. If you are a kid who happens to break or a young adult who happens to break through a joint, chance of getting arthritis is significantly more. Um, a, very common with joint stiffness, swelling pain. Right now when it's raining outside, common to have these types of symptoms. Anti-inflammatories, orthotics and bracing works very well. In terms of surgery, joint replacement in the foot, there's really two good places to re replace a joint. One is the big toe joint, one is your ankle joint. Um, neither one of them has a great long-term 10, 15, 20 year um, study that shows, yeah, this is a great product to use. And I'll show you in terms of big toe joint in a second. It, the track record is, uh, is pretty inferior compared to artificial knees and artificial hips. Those hold up a lot better with time. 